I'm Don. And I'm Cindy, and welcome to Pearls of Liberty this week. We are praying for Japan. Our hearts are with those people. Naturally, we're very concerned, and we're also somewhat concerned because we live on the West Coast in the path of the radiation that would fall if there were a meltdown. Don has found some recent news articles that seem to be quite accurate and sum up what we believe is happening. And if you're following Don on Twitter, it's at Donald Pearl, you'll be able to find those links and read those articles and I think you'll find them reassuring. I know I did. We will be saying a little more about, well, a lot more about Japan and earthquakes in a, in a few minutes, but we wanted to open with some information that we're not sure most people have. The Federal Reserve was installed for a period of 99 years, and that 99 years is going to end. December 31st, 2012. I think that it's possible that we might have a window of opportunity if enough people are aware of that and we have a, a plan in place. But we need to act now. It's actually very late. Uh, but Don has a lot more understanding of the banking system and uh, specifically the Federal Reserve than I do, and I'm, I think you have some comments. Well, well first of all, I, I can't really find broad confirmation of that 99 years. Some people say a 100 year, um, what is the word, not a lease, but a, not a contract either. There's a, a um, can't remember the word, but some people think that that all went out the window, whatever time period it originally was when the U.S. went through bankruptcy in 1933, and and we then the U.S. Treasury became a receivership arm of the private Federal Reserve, and we do have abundant confirmation on that. But what should be clear is that this is the end of a con. This is the tail end of a financial con that has been a long time in planning and execution. And near the end of the con, we're being taken for everything we have because they don't care anymore. They have, they're basically looting the country, the people that are in on it. Many people feel that's why Obama doesn't care about really balancing anything because he basically knows what's going on. And to some extent, all of the, the previous presidents from JFK on have been in on the game and not really telling the American people what's going on. So absolutely we need to focus on what alternatives there are and even Ron Paul and the end the Fed movement makes me wonder what's really going on because they they know the numbers. They know that the, the Fed is basically self-destructing, ending the country, creating the stage for a new global currency or something. You know, it, as we've said before, it's not going to be the Amero overnight turning your dollars. They wouldn't do anything like that. They'll, they, they will always create the illusion of stability. And that's what even what they're doing now, when, with all this talk of fiscal responsibility, there's no way to be fiscally responsible out of this mess. It's a trillion, multi-trillion dollar debt black hole that there's no way out of. So I encourage everybody to research alternatives, what kind of a monetary system, 
makes sense. There are a couple of different camps in the liberty and truth movement leaders, and I really want to encourage this discussion to be broader and for us to start thinking about what we want to have in the place of this thing that is collapsing before our eyes, although people are still in denial about it. Well, for people who want to begin this kind of research, can you can you just, off the top of your head, suggest any, any books? Well, yeah. Um, although I haven't read it myself, but the people that I'm in touch with have read it and say that it's excellent is the Stephen Zaralinga and I can't remember the name of the the book but that is is one excellent resource I would also really encourage people to become familiar with the principles that Henry George talks about and his works are timeless classics they were written just after the Civil War when Americans were much more awake than they are now in terms of understanding the monetary crisis. But it, from a popular standpoint, you can't do better than The Money Masters and The Secret of Oz by Bill Still. I would encourage everybody to look into those. And that is having to do more with a more popular, a populist control of the currency type of a scenario. The alternative, as I see it, two main camps, is the one that Ron Paul falls into and is the gold standard idea championed by Dr. Edwin Vieira, who, whose book is Pieces of Eight, uh, and it, it goes into the history of the dollar. And I am definitely biased toward the other side because when I, when I look into what the gold standard is all about, historically, it's only worked because the elites want it to work, because they control the volume of the currency. The, the downside of the other alternative of the, the popularly controlled fiat currency would be uh, counterfeiting, which actually technically has solutions these days, but also the the ease with which you can get people in there manipulating the system. If you have a truly transparent system and a knowledgeable public, that wins hands down. And there have been periods of time in history where that has worked. The, the tally stick system, etc., talked about by Bill Still. Another excellent person to look into is Ellen Brown and her book, Web of Debt. So those are some resources. Well, thank you. That's helpful. Overall, Considering this, this, these circumstances, in many respects, as United States citizens, we've become very compliant and trusting. We assume that someone else will solve our economy's problems. We assume there's some benevolent daddy somewhere who will step in and rescue us. That is a false assumption. The history of this country is individuals who work together to serve a common interest which is freedom and the most benefit to the most people so if this it's possible this is a window of opportunity they may probably either try to just plow through this date or break our economy so badly that we are forced or we feel forced to uh, accept whatever hand of help they offer us but we don't we don't have to there will be options typically people always have more options than we're aware we have so at this point we, we just hope that people will begin to think along these lines and consider some other possibilities than perhaps what will officially be offered. So, And of course the mindset of preparing yourself puts you in the frame of mind to say nobody else is going to take care of me. I'm not going to depend on the government. I'm not going to be herded into some sports arena or something somewhere to receive my daily allotments when things collapse. Then you are exercising responsibility and it's really only through responsibility that people remain free and that's what we're all about is encouraging people to do 
what it takes to remain free, and that includes knowledge as well as physical preparation. So getting back to some extent to HARP and to Japan, we'd like to draw a broader picture. The earthquake now, some consider a 9.1, is completely devastating and the possibility of nuclear plants melting down. And we, d we will have some links at the end of the video and also just posted on our website about um, things that you can take, ways to avoid radiation poisoning. We're not experts. We're not giving you medical advice. But we are aware of a couple supplements that might might serve to help to some extent. But we'd like to place what's happening right now with Japan in the larger context and it actually does have something to do with the Federal Reserve and particularly more specifically the World Bank. Many countries that have experienced earthquakes over the last couple of years have had some issues with the World Bank and Don would you would you care to comment at this point? There are several YouTube videos that will help people to get oriented that way and maybe you can provide some links to some. There, there's been historically with Japan even there have been incidents in which the Jap Japanese people will, were told you need to go along with this or you might have an earthquake. Basically they've been threatened and they are aware of HARP technology. I don't know if we've outlined that here but there, there is excellent information available online and one of the things that, uh, that we do and just personally we see when earthquakes happen because we both have little iPhone or iPod apps that you can see the tremendous number of 5.0 or greater aftershocks that have occurred in, occurred in Japan. It's not just been one earthquake, one big huge one, but there's even aftershocks that are have approached seven and I think some are anticipated to be more than seven. At any rate, with each of those there's there have been each of those major earthquakes, the initial ones, increased harp activity and I want to make it clear to people that the the main harp installation that's used by the United States is up in Alaska but what it does is is it manipulates the ion, ionosphere shoots microwaves up and they bounce off and actually deflect the ionosphere come back down and cause a superheating in the region with the, the in, within the atmosphere and that causes pressure that eventually it goes down into the ground and causes the earthquake. There's excellent books on this. Dr. Nick Begich has the book Angels Do Not Play This Harp which you can find at Amazon.com. This is not make-believe. This is real technology that the United States government does have. It's crazy but it is being used in this way and nations are threatened that you'd better go along or you might get an earthquake. There's an earth there is documentation of that happening with Japan previously. We don't know the details of what might be going on this time but there were um, people that described the symptoms uh, that were very harp-like before the earthquake. There was a heating of the atmosphere. There was rain coming out of the sky with no clouds. Very strange environment immediately before the earthquake. If an earthquake is generated from inside the earth, that type of thing doesn't happen. So yes, there could be gravitational forces happening because of the nearness of the moon and all of that which are known but that also might be be providing cover or an excuse for 
a, a harp attack. And that's the direction in which we lean in terms of understanding this thing. We don't think it's necessarily all natural. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just mention a couple of the other country, well, more than a couple. If you will look at pearlsofliberty.com, we have some YouTube videos posted there under the Japan earthquake article. One of them shows harp activity leading up to the Japan earthquake. The screens provided in the video are taken directly from a website that monitors HARP, not with any intent to police HARP, but just a University of Alaska website. That's, that's the tie-in for HARP. That's the support system in the education. We should make it completely clear that HARP is not monitoring natural events. HARP is creating electrical signals or forces. It's not, this is not like a, like, seismograph. This is not doing some monitoring thing like a seismograph would. So people with, with be, that haven't looked into HARP yet might not understand what we're talking about. And this is what, what the HARP monitoring things are doing. It's saying what man is doing. It's monitoring our activity that affects the environment. Correct. And not it, from, a, from that specific installation of HARP that sends out electromagnetic Microwaves. Sure, the the screens show what HARP is doing. Now, what HARP is mon the screens monitor HARP, and leading up to the the Japan earthquake, the the activity was practically off the charts. This is also in a in a video on in the same article on PearlsOfLiberty.com that refers to Haiti. That was a video made by, I believe, by the Truther Girls that shows a significant increase in harp activity. And interestingly enough, in New Zealand and China, before both of those earthquakes, people saw rainbow patterns in clouds, which is often an indication of harp activity. It's kind of like an aurora borealis effect. Yes, yeah, it, it's, I, I t I'm sure Don knows a lot more about technically what would ha happen to cause that effect, but harp is, harp is a microwave, it's a giant microwave, it's a how many watt microwave that uh, it, it, it can be used to superheat clouds, and as, as Don mentioned, it's kind of like an aurora borealis effect. Yes, yeah. It, it's, I, I t I'm sure Don knows a lot more about technically what would ha happen to cause that effect. But harp is, harp is a microwave. It's a giant microwave. It's a how many watt microwave that uh, it, it, it can be used to superheat clouds. And as, as Don mentioned, it's not only superheating the clouds so much as it is the ionosphere. That, sure, yes. That the, the, the waves that are, they bounce off the ionosphere and then uh, come back down and then the atmosphere if that includes the clouds is changed. So you got to think really big picture here. This is, this is really the world's worst mad scientist run amok. Absolutely. And where we're, where we're leading with this is how the, US, the resources of the U.S. have been used by the World Bank to shape world events in a way that benefits the World Bank. It's kind of like an ever-tightening noose. The United States clearly controls HARP, and many people believe that the United States is intended to be the enforcement arm of the New World Order, and I, Don, I think you'll, I, I think you'll want to comment about that. Well, I want to point out that there is a Jesse Ventura 
documentary on Jesse Ventura conspiracy theories where he covered Harp and basically there are beyond that many many people in the truth and liberty movement that are monitoring these type of things on YouTube so if somebody isn't used to hearing about this type of thing and you won't in the mainstream media there is a wide group of people including major political figures like Jesse Ventura, ex-political figure, whatever you want to call him, that understand what's going on with these weather weapons. Yeah, it's it's pretty fascinating stuff. It's it's tragic, and it's it's terrifying that this remarkable, wonderful, really potentially wonderful technology is in the hands of people who simply use it to serve their own ends and the uh, so we'll even broaden the context out to some extent this week a uh, gentleman who used to be an analyst for Goldman Sachs predicted a major war for sometime 2012-2013 and he bases his predictions on on technicals, on cycles. Don, would you like to comment on, on that at this point? I read that article a few days ago about that, and I'm not sure of all the technical <clears throat> details, so I don't really want to comment on it from that level, but just that once you understand the the way that the New World Order elites play the game of problem-reaction-solution, creating the crisis in secret, offering the solution, and then posing as the saviors, you'll see that this is what they do, and they usually use, almost always use wars to bring in their next scenario. So they need to create a conflict big enough that it will justify the major changes that they want to bring about. The, we think that people are naturally unstable and this is, these are natural events, so actually they're being manipulated. Their elites do want wars so that they can use them as cover to make the global changes that they want to make. And if we're talking about things like a major war in the Middle East the destabilization that we talked of before and that's still ongoing is ultimately with the goal in mind of keeping opposition to a Anglo-American attack on Iran from being interrupted to destabilize all those countries by providing either new leadership that will buy into this attack that could begin a new global war. That's the type of thing we're talking about. So any rogue nations like Iran that are not part of the banking system need to be taken out. Well, that is, I understand that and I agree with that. I know that the elites want to provoke wars. I, I see a, a different possible outcome, though, that perhaps the elites don't really have everything under control to the extent that they believe they do. And if the United States goes around, because we're being used by these people, we pick a fight with Iraq, we pick a fight with Afghanistan, we impose our will on them, we use our technology to create a horrendous earthquake in Japan. These people really, there's virtually nothing they won't do in order to enforce their will on people. What you're saying is that they're going to experience um, resistance. The, the, the agenda is experience resistant, experiencing resistance because things not have not been going well in Iraq. There, the results 
are really not good. The only people in the world that really believe that Iraq is a democracy that is functioning like a democracy should are the people in the United States that believe what the media is telling us. The people in that region, other Arab nations, other Europeans that are getting more, ha uh, have a closer contact with the region, they understand that this is what has happened there is not a good thing. So what that does is that creates a resistance in the other Arab nations in the region to not go along with whatever U.S. Anglo program is being pushed. So resistance is being created to these scenarios and I think it's going to continue to build steam. On the other hand, what we do see happening is that there is an attempt by the globalists that control the media, including the social media like Facebook and Twitter, that they set up with the idea of promoting the idea of democracy as a movement of the people that Twitter and Facebook and say we're in the square and we've taken over the government to give the illusion of democracy and that really provides the cover. So it gives the feeling, people the feeling of a grassroots movement without really a fundamental changes. So people need to get smarter, people need to dig deeper, people need to understand the bigger picture beyond the manipulation agenda that is clearly being pushed. Well, I believe that people in the United States must be, we all must become aware of what our government is doing. I believe that it's possible that the United States has, is becoming, in many respects, and is becoming known as the bully who pushes everybody else around. And in many respects, I, I feel that we are similar to Nazi Germany under Hitler. And uh, we're, we're being ruled by megalomaniacs who believe they're unstoppable and who believe that no one can resist them. It's a very big world and there are a lot of people in it. And I'm not convinced that the globalists have the grip that they believe they have. And I, I looking at this, believe that it's entirely possible that that the other nations of the world may feel it's incumbent upon them to put the United States in our place in the in the same way that Nazi Germany was was denied, you know, an army for a significant amount of time. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen in terms of other countries attacking the United States, although that's not out of the question. But I think whenever we move into areas that the were really not wanted, that there will be increasing resistance, and that means resistance to the agenda of the New World Order. I want to remind people, I think I mentioned this before, that the long-term plan of the globalists has always been to use America as the enforcement arm of their globalist system as they're rolling it out. So, and we have those three obelisk monuments, the three key places in the world, the, the Vatican for the religious center, London for the financial center, and Washington, D.C. for the military center of those three centers of power that the globalists intend to use to bring in their new world order. So the awareness of the plan and the goals of these people is so important because American military do not want the New World Order. They want what we believe to be is our birthright as a free country. So educating ourselves about what's really going on, not only in our media, but around the world to to help people understand the truth, that's so important because the, the, this plan can only succeed by deception. Great, thank you. Another thing that I would like to mention regarding all this is 
those of us who were in school in the 60s and 70s were actually taught that being a citizen of the United States had certain responsibilities that that were a part of that citizenship and I I doubt that's emphasized very much anymore but it's it's a long-term principle that increased freedom requires increased responsibility and at a certain point if we as people stop exercising our responsibility we will lose our freedom and I, I, I believe that we we all have a responsibility to monitor our government we have our government monitoring us with you know the cameras on every corner that's backwards people individuals have never been much of a threat the threat has always been from from the ruling class I, I don't like to put it that way because it sounds classist but the threat has come from primarily oligarchs and this country was established to prevent oligarchs from ruling however our stopgap measures have failed and oligarchs are ruling as as free people of the United States it's our responsibility to step in and say we, we just we don't support this agenda wait a minute you're saying oligarchs are ruling and but Obama's he's not an oligarch <laughs> please tell me what you're talking about because this is just a, 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 a guy that a man of color black at least at some percentage and you know comes from a uh, impoverished background and and he rises to be president of the United States that's the American dream so what are you talking about oligarchs I think I'm gonna have to make you watch uh, the Manchurian Candidate over again maybe the, the newer one and the older you're one. just a conspiracy <laughs> theorist Come on. guilty as charged Let's okay go real. ahead search Let's me get real. Let me search me pat me down I'm, I'm guilty <laughs> maybe you can tell me how many presidents have been related to uh, King George? I don't think I can, but I bet you can. I think it's all but one, Martin Van oh. Buren or something. Oh my goodness. So, at any rate, there's there's a lot of evidence that this whole thing has been controlled for a very long time, and the attempts to make Obama the populist candidate have really been just media manipulation, preying on a gullible public and people that look behind the scenes see that really it's just a smokescreen changing of the guard type of thing and all of the disagreements between Republicans and Democrats are all on surface issues that don't matter but for some they're real but that's only because you're not seeing the bigger picture. So we're encouraging people to see the bigger picture, seeing that the real paradigm is not left versus right, but liberty versus tyranny, and big government versus small government is, a, is really where the, the discussion needs to lead. Now, I don't know that you have notes on this, but one of the things that still continues to be really big is this, the whole public unions and government shortages and scarcities and um, the, the teachers unions demanding more money and uh, fiscal res conservatives saying no we don't have enough money so what should we tell people about that? Uh, I think we should tell people that it's important that we that we be united in purpose the, 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 the people in, in this nation who believe in the greatness of this nation, who don't believe this nation should be used as, a, as the enforcement arm of the New World Order, we need to agree together. We need to realize that 
we have a common enemy, that we are not enemies of one another. I guess that's love one another. But yeah, when, when the Apostle John was an old man, they would carry him into the church, and he was completely filled with wisdom beyond any of them, I'm sure, and uh, they would stand him up in the front of the church and ask him to speak, and he would, he would just say, love one another. So I'm wondering about how we can help the fiscal conservatives and the public union and everybody else that has a stake in the piece of the pie, the, the entitlement crowd that we talked about earlier as you know, being purposely made very large so that you have this conflict between the entitled class or the dependent class and the those that are more working in the private sector how how can we avoid that conflict it's really tough because this is a typical setup situation where the people that control the money are withdrawing their funds drawing up the liquidity and saying you've just got to duke it out and figure out what to do with this and the problem with trying to be fiscally conservative is that there's no way that you can solve the mess by trying to trim the budget and there's some great clips by Rand Paul where he's made that really clear he, he shows what a small fraction fractional difference there is in between the fiscal conservatives and the the Democrats or the, the people that are trying to um, let those entitlements to continue to remain in force. There's really not that much difference. It's a, it's a small, small percentage. And the really, the, we're going back to what we talked about in the beginning, the only real answer is a new monetary system. We've got to wipe this debt off the books and just begin again. That will be a very difficult thing to do and it probably won't happen until people begin to realize the seriousness of the issue. But we can't afford the infighting because it is the differences are really inconsequential if you have the big picture in mind. There are trillions in this debt black hole that was created by fraudulent derivatives because the Glass-Steagall Act was taken out of the picture. This line between brokerages and banks was dissolved and the United States was turned into a giant casino. So we've got to say we can't go down that road anymore. We've got to say no to the offshore Federal Reserve and we've got to begin to plan to put in a new monetary system that is controlled by the people. Great. I agree completely. Thank you. <laughs> And if you're ready, we will move into the pearl culture segment of our show. And we saw just a, a couple of films this week. Um, one is Daybreakers, which I happen to think was a reasonably good freedom fighter movie. It pictures. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's it's a it's somewhat different from the typical vampire movie. Vampire zombie movie. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it was good. I I just I found Daybreakers good entertainment. I tend to like some vampire movies, and we don't do the, all the new Twilight and all that. I like the classical vampire stories. This is a it's a very good one. I think Freedom Fighters will enjoy Daybreakers. And we also saw Tron, which is, my major impression was great special effects and always fun to see Jeff Bridges. Do you have any comments on Tron? Well, I did think that the, the whole scenario of this parallel reality that he was captive to and that there was a, an evil counterpart of himself 
is a tremendous allegory that this, this full storyline maybe didn't do justice to the depth of the allegory, but there's, there's so much there that we, because like in The Matrix, we're living in this false reality and there's this false dualism set up to create the conflict to keep the reality going. And that's exactly what the people that are manipulating our false reality do. And they trap us in it, and we can't get out, we can't go back home until there is some, a breakthrough of some kind, until the system uh, destructs. And that's kind of what happens in Tron. Great. Thank you. So, uh, in a couple of days, it's St. Patrick's Day, so we're wearing our green. Uh, next week we may be discussing church and how virtually any organization can come to serve the New World Order. And we're Christians, we love Jesus, we love the church, but we also see some control mechanisms. So we, we may be talking about that next week since it's kind of a... Christian time of year with with St. Patrick's Day and Lent. So uh, we we do you know we love the movie Shock a lot. It's with Johnny Depp. It's a, it's a perfect movie to watch during Lent. I think you'll have fun with it. And Don, do you have anything further to say? <laughs> How about Happy St. Patrick's Day? Happy St. Patrick's Day. No, he was. He was a great warrior of the faith. That, there's some exciting stuff that you can find out online about his supernatural battles with the Druids. So you might sure. enjoy digging that up and, and reading of it if you enjoy power encounters. It was like Elijah versus the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. What, what really happened with the real St. Patrick. It's great stuff. Sure, maybe we'll even put some YouTube videos up on our website for you. So, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And